Hello everyone. Welcome to Embedded Laboratory. I will show you how to make a weather monitoring application using ESP32 and Inflixed cloud databases in today's video. First, we will interface the DHT11 sensor with ESP32 to get temperature and humidity data. Then we will connect the ESP32 to a Wi-Fi router to access internet functionality. After this, we will connect with the Inflixed cloud database. And then we will periodically send the temperature and humidity value to Inflixed cloud database. And the final step is to create a dashboard on Inflixed cloud to visualize the temperature and humidity data. This is a dashboard from my home setup, which I use to measure my living room's temperature and humidity value. So, let's get started. I am using Platformio for writing the code, and the same code will work on Arduino IDE also. Click on New Project button and give a dedicated name to this project. After this select the ESP32 board and then select Arduino as the framework. You are free to use the default location for saving your project-related files, and if needed, you can also change it as I have done in my case. The Platformio has generated all the required files for us. Now we will install the DHT11 sensor library. This can be done by selecting the libraries and then searching for DHT11. I will use the DHT sensor library from the Adafruit. Click on Add to Project button and the select the project in which we wanted to add this library. So, now the DHT sensor library is added to our project. And now we can start writing our software for DHT11 sensor testing. Let's start by including the DHT sensor header files. After this I will create some macros for DHT sensor pin, DHT sensor type, and a DHT sensor refresh time, which is 2 seconds here. With the help of this macro, I will periodically pull the temperature and humidity values from the DHT11 sensor. Next, I will declare some variable, one for storing the humidity value, one for storing the temperature value, and one for pulling the data from the DHT sensor. Now, I will create two functions for DHT sensor. One function is the initialization function and is only responsible for calling the initialization part. And the next function is the DHT task manager function. This function is called inside the loop function and is responsible for pulling the temperature and humidity data from the DHT sensor. In this DHT task manager function, we will get the temperature and humidity data, and then we will check if the data is valid. If the data is valid, integer part of these values are stored in the respective global variables, else an error message is printed over the serial port. Let's compile the code. And it builds without any issue. Next step is to test the DHT11 sensor, if this is working fine or not. Press the upload button to upload the code into the ESP32. Make sure that DHT11 sensor is connected to pin 12 of the ESP32. Uploading is completed. Now open the serial terminal. As we can see there is no data coming from the ESP32. And this is because I forget to call the DHT task manager function in the loop function. Let's build and upload again. Now we are getting some data, but the serial terminal is not able to read properly, and the reason is incorrect baud rate setting of serial terminal. As you can see the selected baud rate is 9600 while our program baud rate is 115200. This can be fixed by adding a line in the platformio.ini file. Just add monitor speed equals 115200. 
Now build again and upload the code to the ESP32. Actually there was no need to build again, simply opening the serial terminal should work. Again, we have some problem, the temperature and humidity values are incorrect, or we are getting the error message, and the reason for this behavior is because, I forget to call the DHT initialization function inside the setup function, let's fix this and test again. Now as you can see, the project works fine. We can see correct humidity and temperature values on the serial terminal. So, one part is completed, and the next step is to connect to Wi-Fi router and connect to Inflixed Cloud database. Open the Inflixed Cloud website and click on Try for free. It will take you to another page. If you don't have an account, create one. I already have an account, so I will just log in directly. They have already provided us with some of the getting started examples and also for the Arduino platform, an example is available. We can use this getting started page for Arduino as a reference for us by clicking on Arduino. As a first step here, we need to install the Inflixed client library, and this can be done simply by clicking on libraries and then searching for the Inflixed in the search box. As you can see the library is available with the name ESP8266, but don't worry about the name, as the same library will work without any problem with ESP32 also. Just add this library to our project, and once this library is added, the platformio.ini file is also updated. The next step is to create a bucket. A bucket is a location where the time series data is stored, in our case, it is temperature and humidity data. I will create a new bucket named test bucket for this project. Now, include the Wi-Fi and Inflix related header files, and also create Wi-Fi object in our project as shown in the video. Now, copy the macros shown here into our project. With the help of these macros, we can configure our Wi-Fi SSID, Wi-Fi password, time zone, Inflixed server URL, token, organization, and bucket name. You may be wondering from where this URL comes from, so this comes from here. Although the API token is already generated, but still I will show you from where we can generate the token again. So, from here we can generate a new token. This token is really important. It is basically a type of password for communicating with your Inflixed cloud database. I will delete this automatically generated token and will generate another token which can be used with our project. Now, I will copy this token into our project. I will define another macro named device. This macro is basically the device name that will be used by Inflixed. By this macro we can basically differentiate between the devices if multiple devices are sending data to the same Inflixed bucket. I will also define another macro named Inflixed send time and set its value to 10 seconds with the help of this macro. The data will send to Inflixed Cloud periodically every 10 seconds. Now, let's write a function to connect ESP32 with the Wi-Fi router. And all of this will be done under the function named Wi-Fi Setup. In this function, ESP32 is initialized in station mode, and then we wait in a loop until ESP32 is connected with the Wi-Fi router. Now, let's build the project and upload it to the ESP32 to check if it is connecting to Wi-Fi router or not. So, it works fine. Let's add a message also. When connecting is successful. 
Now, let's start writing the code to connect with InfluxDB. Here also, we will follow the same approach as I followed for DHT sensor. There will be two functions. One is the initialization function, which synchronizes the time and connects with the InfluxDB database. And another function is the manager function, which runs periodically inside the loop function. The task of this manager function is to periodically send data to the InfluxDB cloud, and this data includes the Wi-Fi RSSI temperature, and humidity values. First, these values are added to point. And after this, it is checked if Wi-Fi is still connected or not. If not connected, the software will retry for the connection, and once connected, the point containing the Wi-Fi RSSI, temperature and humidity values, are sent to the InfluxDB cloud. If not written successfully an error message is printed. Now, let's call the initialization function from the setup function, and the manager function from the loop function. The code builds without error. Now, let's upload the code and see if it is working or not. After opening the serial terminal, we can see the message that ESP32 is trying to connect with the Y router. And the connection with the router is successful. After this ESP32 is also able to connect properly with the InfluxDB cloud database. And from these messages on the serial terminal, it is clear that writing the point is successful, which means that ESP32 is successfully able to write to the InfluxDB database. Now, let's go to the InfluxDB cloud and create a dashboard from this transmitted data. As a first step click on the dashboard menu and then click on the create dashboards button. On the top left, you can name this dashboard with whatever name you want to give, I will use Weather Monitoring Station as its name. Then, I will click on the Add Cells button, and then I will graphically query the data. In From section we will select the bucket as Test Bucket, and then select our measurement name as Sensor Data. Then we have three fields, RSSI, Humidity and Temperature. We can select all in the same graph but that will not make much sense. So I will place this data individually on each graph and gauges, as shown in the video. I am using one gauge and one graph to show the RSSI, temperature, and humidity values. There are a lot of customization options with which you can play and create impressive dashboards.
The following screen shows the dashboard which contains the data from my living room. So, that's all from this project. Let me know in the comments section if you have any queries or suggestions. I am also planning to make a video where I will use the same project and will query the InfluxDB database to create a dashboard on Grafana. So, please stay connected if you like this video. Please press the like button, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you.